Hey everyone, Justin from Playing Board Games here, and today I'm going to share six quick tips for new players from Arkham Horror the Card Game. These tips will help you have a better time with the game, while also helping you better understand what exactly to expect when you're just starting out. Before we get started, you should like this video and subscribe to the channel. We release Arkham Horror content every day of the week for beginners, intermediates, and experts. Don't be afraid to fail. Arkham Horror the Card Game is a difficult game when you're just starting out. Even with experience, a bad draw can put you in a really tough place. You may wonder, after going up against what seems like the impossible, if this is normal for the game, and don't worry, it is normal. Approaching the game early on with the mindset that you will fail tests, that you will make mistakes, and that you will lose scenarios is a good thing. It prepares you to accept the losses and focus on getting better at the game. This tip is especially true for skill tests. The game forces you to make a lot of tests, and if you spend all your resources to pass each test you're faced with, you'll run out of resources quickly. Discovering when you want to pass and when you're okay to fail is an important skill in this game. When you make a skill test, ask yourself what would happen if you fail and if that is a bad thing. The correct answer changes from situation to situation, but identifying this is an important part of getting better at the game. It just takes practice to find it, and uh, a lot of failure in the process. Focus on playing for the story. With other co-op games, you are given the mindset that if you don't win, you lose. However, with Arkham Horror, that isn't the case. Arkham Horror tells a great story throughout its campaign, and that story continues even if you don't achieve the winning result in a scenario. Yes, the rewards may not be as exciting on a failure, but that is okay. It is very rare that a loss in a scenario causes you to lose outright. So take the bad beats and continue on. Don't replay and grind a scenario endlessly to achieve the perfect resolution. You will learn just as much about the game and more continuing on to the next scenario while also enjoying the campaign's story in the process. After you have finished the campaign the first time, you can return to that campaign again with the knowledge of what you've seen on your first play and use that knowledge to tech against the campaign. But when you're just starting out, focus on experiencing the story and have a good time doing it. There is nothing wrong with playing on easy. Some new players may feel that easy mode isn't a true Arkham Horror experience. That, of course, isn't true, and any difficulty that you choose to play on is fine as long as you are having fun. With all board games, the goal is fun even in a punishing cooperative game. Fun is the balance of difficulty and success. This means that if the game is too difficult and you're finding no success, it isn't fun. The inverse of this is also true. If you aren't being challenged, success won't seem as worth it and the game will become trivial. So, if you aren't finding that perfect balance in this game, the place to start is by adjusting the difficulty level you're playing at. The difficulty level between easy and standard only changes the tokens in the token pool. With easier test modifiers, players will be able to better learn the game's tempo while also still challenging themselves in the process. If you find easy to be the perfect level to play at, start there or even stay there. If you find it is becoming too easy on future playthroughs or as your collection grows, consider bumping the difficulty level. Find that perfect balance for you between difficulty and success. Experiment and make mistakes while deck building. One of the best aspects of this game is the deck building. Choosing which investigator to play and what cards to put in your deck is what makes Arkham so much fun. When you're just starting out, this can be an incredibly daunting process, and the best way to handle it without reading or watching guides is to try cards out and experiment. Experimentation will cause you to learn more about the game than anything else will. The best way to find out if a card works for you or doesn't is to put that card into your deck and try it out. If the card worked, that's great, and if the card didn't, you've learned something about the game and became better at it in the process. Deck building and upgrading is another piece of this game that requires practice and experience. Don't let yourself be too intimidated by it and just try cards out. As you get better at deck building, you'll learn to find the perfect balance of all the necessary parts, such as economy, consistency, function, and fun. Don't try and do everything. A common mistake often seen with new players is that they build their deck to try and do everything. They want to fight, get clues, heal, survive against the Mythos deck, and more. Instead of having your deck try and solve every problem that shows up, 
have certain investigators in the group take certain roles. Of course, this changes depending on the number of investigators playing the game, but it is still something that should always be taken into consideration when playing with two or more investigators. If it is your job to fight enemies, your deck should focus on fighting enemies. Having a few cards in your deck that help you gather clues is fine, but each card that doesn't help you fight enemies or survive fighting enemies will lower your consistency of getting your job done. Try and find cards that work with your game plan while also helping in other areas. Having a focus on your deck increases your deck's efficiency, which means you'll have a better handle on the game. The better handle on the game you have, the more you'll walk away with successful scenario resolutions. Healing isn't as necessary as you think. Healing may seem like an important part of the game when you're just starting out. However, cards that only heal you don't provide as much value as you may think. The best way to look at this is that most of the time, healing is just not dying, and not dying isn't actually getting you ahead of the game. You want all of your decisions to push you ahead as much as you can, and taking time to not die could be better spent trying to win. Of course, it makes sense that you may be worried about dying. So instead of using cards that only heal damage or horror, look for cards that do that and something else. This can include playing allies or assets that take damage or horror in your place, or playing cards that give you a benefit of healing for something you would be doing anyway. You can even focus your deck on counteracting the Mythos deck, whether through relevant skills or other effects, thereby essentially dealing with the damage before it is even dealt. Arkham Horror is a fantastic game, and I hope you find as much enjoyment in it as I have. The game continues to grow, and there's a lot to discover when you're just starting out. Hopefully, these tips have helped. If you want further advice, head to the comment section or to our Discord channel. And once again, consider subscribing if you want some more awesome Arkham Horror content. We dive into these tips in greater detail in our How to Win and List video series that you can find at the end of this video. Have fun! Thanks for watching! And try not to draw the autofail. You won't, I promise. It's gonna get you. It always gets you. You think it's not gonna, but then it just shows up and it ruins your entire day because you committed a bunch of relevant skills and still somehow you draw that god dang autofail.